Right, so welcome to the 2019 Grand Fondo Scotland Summer Edition Course Preview. We're here at beautiful Stirling Castle with the event organiser, Gary. How you doing? Hi, how's it going? So the riders are going to be rolling out just in front of us here. We've got the castle, as Cameron says there, as the backdrop. Beautiful views behind us there of uh, the Wallace Monument. And um, yeah, fingers crossed this will be sunny on uh, <laughs> Sunday the 16th of June. So not far away now. So yeah, we've, we've worked really hard to get Stirling Castle on board and we're just trying to do things a little bit differently and uh, just showcase some cool venues for the parts of our events. So from the Grand Depart in Stirling Castle, we actually rolled down this cobbled road in front of us and from here we head out towards the hills, don't we? Yeah, so what we've done is um, we've selected the road just as you exit the castle and means that we miss completely out all the sort of busy islands and everything inside the, the town uh, centre, uh, any road furniture etc. You guys are basically going to head straight into the country roads. So just at the bottom of the hill here, the bottom of Stirling Castle, and then that's you heading out towards uh, Kippen. Awesome, so let's go and uh, get on the route and show you all the best bits. So once off the cobbles we then turn left onto this lovely little road that goes under the castle and then from here we head down to the main road. Sterling now and we're already into the lush greenery of, of the Sterling Hills so already out onto the country roads and we're flying along so this is going to be a great one come Sunday. So the roundabout we just passed there was where the Medio and the Grand Fondo split off. So the Grand Fondo comes up and we're now going up the Kiffin Climb. It's uh, about 5.6 kilometers long and averages 3%, so a nice tasty one to do. Um, and we're only about 10, 10 miles in. Yeah, just over 10 miles in now. So yeah, that's the two routes splitting for, for a moment. And yeah, the Grand Fondo takes in this this little climb. Yeah, what's good about this is, <coughs> although it's pretty windy, yeah. um, it's quite sheltered in the trees as well. Yeah. So you can get a little bit of a respite on some of the shallower gradients. Yeah, but yeah, 5.6k uh, of climbing isn't shabby though, so <laughs> um, this, this will be one to possibly knock back the gears and, and pace yourself because there are plenty more climbs to come. And I tell you what, as well, Cameron, I can feel those pancakes and bacon. <laughs> Already, I wish I had my breakfast a bit earlier. Exactly, you'll need to be getting your food down you because yeah, this one might sting. Yeah, beautiful views as well. Exactly. Right. Yeah. here is the campsies um, over towards Glasgow. Um, so yeah, we've just crested the hill and we're about to head over towards Aberfoyle. Yeah, that was, that was a tough little climb just coming out of Kippen. There's a couple of wee false uh, flats just to be wary of once you get to the, near the summit. And then you've got a lovely like, smooth road descent now where, uh, as Cameron says, you've got the trotting as your backdrop. So be good fun. Yeah, so we're going to descend down this uh, little kind of minor road and then head onto the flats and head towards Aberfoyle. Um, what are the kind of main things on this descent? There's a few nice little corners on there, a few, the views obviously out 
to the hills are spectacular. Yeah, it's, um, and the good thing about this descent is it's fairly open, so you can see all the corners coming, and uh, the road surface is really smooth as well. And obviously, is you've got the opportunity now to get some food in you after that first uh, climb, where you're just over. Sorry, So 20 miles in uh, to the route of the Grand Fondo, we're coming along the shore of Lake of Menteith and we're heading towards our, first, our main climb of the Duke's Pass. Climbed out of Aberfoyle town and we are on to the main climb, the Duke's Pass. 3.8 kilometers long with an average gradient of 5.6%. So, a bit of a beastie this one. We've also got some proper alpine hairpins coming up. So, this is uh, if, you can, if you can deal with it through your pain, through the grimace, there's going to be some cracking views at the top. Uh, this time of year, the bluebells are, are out as well. So. We may even get a little bit of a sweat on up here. Well, we'll definitely get a sweat on, won't <laughs> you? I'll certainly get a sweat on up here. Uh, and a wee tip as well, when you're going through Aberfoyle before you turn right and start the Duke's Pass, you're going to have quite a fast run in into it on your big chain ring. I would just drop into the wee chain ring before you turn right. <coughs> just make sure that chain is on the wee ring. Get ready for the steepest bit at the bottom. Once you're on the main climb proper, I'd say there's a few of these switchbacks that climb you through the ferns and out of the canopy. And at the top, we're going to get a cracking view over the trossocks. But for now, I think uh, the advice is going to be grit your way through the pain and look forward to the, to the feed station in Calendar. Absolutely. And just because it's so steep at the bottom, just remember don't go too hard. Just get yourself into a good rhythm and you'll get some of these false flats here to just try and recover and ready for the next steep section. So we have just crested the summit of uh, Duke's Pass and now we are starting our descent uh, down towards Calendar. So how far away is the feed zone? Uh, so we're just over 10 miles now from the top of the Duke's Pass climb to the feed station and a well deserved break. Hmm. Uh, once you crest the top of the Duke's Pass you've got a lovely sweeping uh, descent now, nice and open hairpins and um, perfectly good road surface as well and you've got some stunning views as you can see behind us over some amazing uh, lakes so just make sure you enjoy all of that after your hard work up the Duke's Pass.
down the Duke's Pass descent. Cameron, what do you think of that? Pretty spectacular. Uh, I was pretty focusing on the road because it's quite a technical descent, but uh, there's definitely some bits where it opens out and you just see all this amazing landscape around you. Um, it's it's just a it's a wonderful descent. It's probably one of the best in Scotland, uh, and it's so close to Stirling. So no, it's a really beautiful one. And when the the sun is almost out on a day like this, you can't really beat it. Uh, just remember to keep your head up, look as far down the road as possible, and uh, you'll be fine. Uh, it's going to be a really good one come come event day. After the beautiful descent of the Duke's Pass, you cruise along the banks of Loch Achery towards the feed zone at Wheels of Calendar. You'll hopefully have a tailwind for this part of the route, and the thought of refueling and a wee rest will get you flying along towards Calendar in no time. So we've got our feed station is going to be here, and uh, Wheels of Calendar and the charity Fab, who is one of their locations is the Blazing Saddles. Uh, they are letting us use the facility to have our feed station. We've got all sports nutrition that are supplying lots of energy products and electrolyte drink and we'll also have the usual bananas, water and lots of yummy pastries and other snacks for you to enjoy on the day. The other thing that we can do obviously if everybody's stuck with a problem or something and they need uh, an emergency part or tubes or something like that we can hopefully help out from our workshop as well. After the lovely feed station stop at Wheels, you go through Calendar and then out of Calendar and you do the Grand Fondo does one loop just on the outskirts of Calendar. Then as you head back towards Stirling, you head over this climb, which is only 2k long, but it averages 4.5%, which doesn't sound like much, but I'm sure at this stage in the ride, it's going to feel like something. Absolutely, yeah. Just making sure that you get your pace right on these climbs and uh, make sure you've got enough fuel in the body as well at this latter stages. But it's a tough climb, like Cameron says. Just got a good pace going up it. Yeah. Okay. So we've just came up over one of the last climbs of the Grand Fondo Scotland route. Uh, it was just over two k's, 4.5%. Uh, and once you get to here, this is the highest uh, point from now to the finish line. So, nice descent down here. You can get some more fuel down you and, and enjoy the run in now. Hopefully we're tailwind back to Stirling Castle. So that is us finished the 2019 Grand Fondo Scotland route. Uh, how many miles later is that? So 75 miles for the Grand Fondo and uh, 55 miles for the Medium Fondo. So the Medio Fondo had 2386 feet of climbing and the Grand Fondo had an epic of 4065 feet of climbing. Cool, so after all that we finish in the shadow of Stirling Castle. As you roll in you'll see the marquee past the party across the finish line and there'll be uh, various exhibitors and, and tents and hopefully a good opportunity to catch up with your friends and, and enjoy some lovely food as well. So after all that you're probably feeling a bit knackered but uh, yeah we hope you'll have had a, an amazing day. Um, so if you're interested in um, entering or you're interested in finding out more about the Grand Fondo Scotland 2019, where should people go? So visit our website www.grandfondoscotland.com, get your entry in, it's £35 and we hope to see you there.